Okay, um, well last week we spent some time discussing income statements and um, how taxes are used. Uh, this week we're going to spend some time discussing what um, tax forms actually look like and, and how you can file your federal income taxes. Now a point of note uh, with the with the forms that we're using this week, uh, we're going to practice with what's called a 1040 EZ. It's a simple uh, federal tax return form. And we're also going to spend some time working with the 1040 A form, which is also a, a simple federal tax return form. Uh, these are no longer in use in the year 2018. So um, unfortunately, the the newest tax forms at the time of me recording this video uh, weren't published for use yet. Um, they're still in draft form. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with our discussion uh, utilizing these two forms. Uh, the nice thing is, is that it looks like the new 1040 regular form is um, a mix of these two, the EZ and the A. Uh, so if we can successfully complete an EZ or a 1040A form, uh, then you should be able to complete a regular 1040 form for the year 2018 and beyond. With that said, um, if you think about the federal taxes, the um, the amount of money that you spend on federal taxes, it's not usually paid in a lump sum. You don't write a check to pay your taxes one time at the end of the year. Instead, your employer withholds calculated amounts from your paychecks. In other words, they will take um, portions of this grand total out of each and every paycheck and uh, essentially hold on to that for you to pay your tax bill when it comes due at the end of the year. So at the end of the year, you will receive what's called a W-2 form. And this W-2 form indicates your uh, wages, the amount of money that you made for the year, and the withholdings, uh, the amount of money that's been withheld or kept from you in your paychecks throughout the year. It'll give you the grand total of each. So if you were to add up all of your paychecks, if you, if you laid them out on a table and, and you added up all of the income, uh, that would be represented by your wage amount. And if you add up how much money has been withheld from you from your paycheck, uh, then that's going to get reported to you as well. A W-2 form looks something like this. Um, they really haven't changed much in, in, in the years. Uh, so you can tell that uh, you know your name would be listed at, uh, in one section of the form. And the company that you work for will be listed in another section. Your social security number is included on here. As well as, I don't know if you can see that very well. There we go. Uh, as well as your income, how much taxes you've paid so far to the federal, uh, federal income tax. Um, also, how much money has been paid for Social Security, Medicare, amongst other things. Uh, we'll talk about the other boxes later, but for right now, we're focusing on box number one and two for wages and federal withholdings. Now, the taxes that you owe, uh, the federal taxes that you owe, are based on a calculated amount called the earned income. And this earned income is not not necessarily the same as your actual income or what your wages add up to. So in other words, you receive allowances or deductions, they're officially called, uh, to reduce the amount that your wages show. So if I earned $50,000, I may be able to deduct from that $10,000, and that would make my earned income $40,000. It would be smaller, and I'd only pay taxes on the smaller amount rather than the grand total. Uh, we'll talk more about those deductions at a later time. So as of tax year 2017 and, and prior, you had uh, to choose from one of these three forms. Uh, now anybody could have used the 1040 form. This is what's also known as the long form. Anybody can file with that. Um, but it's the most complicated, and it's called the long form for a reason. Um, on that form, there used to be, um, oh gosh, I think 60 lines or so of information that you had to provide. Um, on a 1040A, on the other hand, we call this the short form, because uh, while many people qualified for using this, not everybody did. Uh, we called it the short form because um, it was only 40 or, or lines or so. Um, it was much shorter than the long form, uh, not as detailed, but um, still effective for, for many people. Uh, 
And the 1040EZ was also known as a short form, and it contained maybe 10 lines or, or 15 lines of information that needed to be provided. Um, on the, the new 1040 form um, that everybody has to use for, for the year 2018 and beyond, uh, I was just looking at it, and it's currently um, looks like about 23 lines of information. So it's much shorter than the long form. And in fact, it's even shorter than this 1040A form of the past. Uh, and it's somewhere in between this um, EZ and the A form. So uh, as I learn more about that, um, we'll, we'll talk more about it in class. Uh, but for right now, we're going to pretend that we're still operating under the old standards. And um, um, most students in high school and even for their first few years living on their own will use either the 1040A or 1040EZ short forms. Uh, the nice thing about these forms is that the instructions to use them and to help you decide which form to use are provided by the IRS and you can download them from the IRS website. And so here's why I say that most um, young people will be using the 1040EZ form because in order to qualify and be able to use the 1040EZ um, you must either be a single person or you are married and filing your taxes together um, or in other words we call that filing jointly. In other words you will um, combine the income of yourself and your spouse. Um, you must also have no dependents other than yourself and your spouse. So in other words, if you have kids, you cannot use the 1040 EZ form. Uh, but if you're single with no children or if you're married and no children, then you can use the 1040 EZ form. You can't make a lot of money, so if you're uh, making a million dollars a year, that's going to prevent you from being able to use this form. But if your taxable income or earned income is less than $100,000, you can use the EZ form, which again, most young people do fall into this category. And then if you have an investment that's growing and uh, is earning interest, we'll talk more about these later, but if you have taxable interest uh, that's less than $1,500 in a year, um, then you can use this form. And again, most young people, even if they start investing at a young age, uh, tend not to have investments that are making $1,500 or more per year. And so that's why we would use the easy form. So that's going to do it for the day six portion of this video. I just wanted to go over some definition and some terms, and I do expect you to look ahead at the sample problems that are uh, available for download from Schoology today and spend some time working on them. Uh, there will be another video posted for uh, day seven for you to watch and practice with as well. Thanks.